Hello friends, the topics that I am going to cover in today's video are femoral artery, its origin, extent, course and branches. Then profunda femoral artery, its branches and the arterial anastomosis present in the gluteal region and in the thigh. They are trochanteric anastomosis, cruciate anastomosis, longitudinal arterial anastomosis in the thigh and we will also look at the relevant applied aspects. Let us begin with femoral artery. This is the main or the chief artery of the lower limb. So in this diagram we can see here this is the thigh region. We can see the femur here. This is the interior aspect of the thigh and this is the uh, abdominal region and the demarcation between the two regions that is abdomen and the front of the thigh is by this inguinal ligament the green structure which is extending between anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle here which has not been marked here now let us see how it begins the our femoral artery the femoral artery is actually nothing but continuation of external iliac artery so we can see here this is the external iliac artery which in turn is a branch of common iliac artery and the two common iliac arteries these are the terminal branches of abdominal aorta so from abdominal aorta we will have common iliac artery common iliac artery will divide into internal iliac artery which will go to the pelvic region and the external iliac artery which we can see here and as soon as it crosses the inguinal ligament at mid inguinal point you start calling this as femoral arteries so where exactly is the mid inguinal point mid inguinal point is midpoint between anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis this is not same as midpoint of inguinal ligament now let us see where it ends the femoral artery after coursing through the thigh the femoral artery it will continue as popliteal artery because it will reach the popliteal fossa here which is present just behind the knee so here by passing through this opening or gap here which is known as adductor hiatus and this is tendinous opening along the insertion of adductor magnus muscle so by passing through adductor hiatus it now continues as popliteal artery so we can say that femoral artery is continuation of external iliac artery and it continues as popliteal artery let us briefly look at its course now. So as I said earlier also, the, poplite, uh, the, sorry, the femoral artery, this enters the thigh by passing deep to inguinal ligament, right? So that I have, we have already discussed, you can see at the mid inguinal point. Now after this, the artery is going to course through the femoral triangle and obviously it will be related here medially to the femoral vein and laterally to the femoral nerve, which you can see here. So it will pass through that and at the apex of the femoral triangle, it is going to enter uh, into the adductor canal or the subsartorial canal. This muscle which you see here is the sartorius muscle. So it will enter the adductor canal here and I have already told you it ends at the osseoaponeurotic opening in the adductor magnus and continues as popliteal artery. Let us now look at the branches of femoral artery. Femoral artery gives few branches in the femoral triangle and some in the adductor canal. So first we will look at the branches in femoral triangle. They are divided into two groups, superficial branches and deep branches. First we will look at the superficial branches. There are three superficial branches given in the femoral triangle and they are, the first one is superficial epigastric, which you can see here, which runs uh, along the anterior abdominal wall towards the umbilicus. And the second is superficial circumflex iliac which you can see running just below the inguinal ligament towards the anterior superior iliac spine. The third is superficial external pudendal which runs medially towards the external genitalia which it supplies also. Then we have deep branches. There are two deep branches. In fact, three uh, types of deep branches and these are first is the deep external pudendal. Again, you can see running medially towards the external genitalia and supplying that. Then we have the profunda femoris artery. This is the main artery of the thigh which you can see here. This is the profunda femoris artery. Plus we also have muscular branches which are given to the muscles in the interior compartment of the thigh. Then we have branches in adductor canal. 
so here again we will have uh, muscular branches then we have another branch which is known as descending genicular branch so this descending genicular branch this is going to participate in the anastomosis uh, around the knee joint right so these are the branches of femoral triangle i'll just repeat it gives few branches in the femoral triangle so we have three superficial three deep branches and two branches here which are present in the adductor canal let us now consider the branches of profunda femoris artery here we can see this is external iliac artery which continues as femoral artery as soon as it passes behind the inguinal ligament and here we can see the largest branch of femoral artery that is profunda femoris artery this is the chief artery of the thigh supplying all the structures there and it also gives a nutrient branch to the femur so let us look at its first branch the first branch is the medial circumflex artery which we can see here so this artery arises from the posterior medial aspect of the profunda femoris artery so first it will run in the anterior compartment of the thigh then passes between sos major and pectineus muscle to reach adductor compartment and finally it reaches the gluteal region and we will see here it gives three branches these three branches are ascending transverse and descending branch so the ascending and the transverse branches they will participate in the anastomosis which is present at the upper part of the back of the thigh so we will consider that later but uh, this uh, ascending branch has got another importance so that we must consider now here so here if we are looking at the femur from the posterior aspect and here on the medial side we can see this is the femoral artery this is profunda femoris artery this is the lateral circumflex and this is the medial circumflex femoral arteries now this medial circumflex femoral artery its ascending branch will anastomose with the ascending branch of lateral circumflex femoral artery which cannot be seen here and they will form a vascular ring around the lower part of the neck of the femur from this vascular ring the straight retinacular arteries they will pass along the neck of the femur to supply the head of the femur so this ascending branch of medial circumflex femoral artery this will be the main arterial supply to the head of the femur so this uh, point you must remember now let us look at the second branch so second branch which we can see here this is the lateral circumflex uh femoral artery which you can see here so this is going to run uh, laterally on the anterior aspect right and this will also give three branches ascending transverse and a descending branch all the branches they will participate in anastomosis the ascending branch and the transverse branch in the upper part of the back of the thigh we will consider that later as i said and this descending part the descending branch this will participate in the anastomosis around the knee joint the third type of branches are the muscular branches right which will be given to the muscles of the thigh of various compartments and then we have another type of branches which are known as perforating arteries these are perforating arteries because they perforate the insertion of a muscle right so there are actually three perforating arteries and the fourth one which again is a perforating type only but this is the continuation or end of the profunda femoris artery so these perforating branches you can see here arising from the profunda femoris artery they will pierce the Uh, adductor magnus muscle near its insertion and run along the posterior compartment of the thigh and then wind around it they will also give ascending and descending branches so here the four main branches of the profunda femoris artery they are medial circumflex femoral lateral circumflex femoral muscular branches and four perforating branches now let us look at the anastomosis uh, which are present in the posterior aspect of the thigh so the first uh, anastomosis we will consider is the trochanteric anastomosis remember you must have learnt in your general anatomy that anastomosis are meant to provide collateral circulation if there is any block in an artery so here this 
trochanteric anastomosis it is present where near the trochanteric fossa of the femur so this is the posterior view of the upper end of the femur right so here we can see greater trochanter lesser trochanter and there is a depression here right that is known as trochanteric fossa so it is present in this region and this is the main blood supply to the head right because remember here the ascending branch of lateral circumflex and ascending branch of medial circumflex femoral artery are participating in this anastomosis now let us see this anastomosis is between the branches of internal iliac artery and which are the branches from internal iliac artery you can see from above first here is the descending branch of superior gluteal artery this is a branch of internal iliac artery then second is a branch from inferior gluteal artery right so both gluteal arteries are branches of internal iliac artery now from the lower aspect or from below right which arteries are participating these are branches of profunda femoris artery we have already seen the medial circumflex femoral and lateral circumflex flex femoral which branches the ascending branch so it is easy to remember because from the lower part right the uh, circumflex femoral arteries are participating so they have to ascend up so that's why the ascending branches will be there and descending branch of which arteries will be there the superior gluteal artery and the inferior gluteal artery so now if there is any block in the external iliac artery or femoral artery prior to the origin of profunda femoris the collateral circulation can occur and the blood can reach the lower limb second we consider the cruciate anastomosis now this cruciate anastomosis you can see here this is present uh, in the upper part of the back of the thigh at the level of middle of lesser trochanter of femur so again this is the posterior view of the femur we can see here this is the lesser trochanter and uh, close to that we have the anastomosis again this anastomosis is also between branches of internal iliac artery and branches of profunda femoris artery so again this will provide collateral circulation if there is any block in the external iliac artery or femoral artery before the origin of profunda femoris artery so let us look at the branches here now so here the branches are descending branch of inferior gluteal artery that is the branch of internal iliac artery rest of the branches are from the profunda femoris artery so they are the transverse branch of medial circumflex femoral transverse branch of lateral circumflex femoral and ascending branch of first perforating artery which is again a branch of profunda femoris so this you have to remember in each anastomosis trochanteric as well as cruciate four arteries are anastomosing this is actually known as cruciate because uh, the arteries which are participating they form a cross kind of a structure right so this is cruciate anastomosis then we have another anastomosis which is present in the back of the thigh so this is the anterior view this is the posterior view so in along the back of the thigh and this is a longitudinal arterial anastomosis so let us see here which arteries will be participating here but before that let us identify the arteries this is the femoral artery this is profunda femoris artery and you can see the perforating branches arising from profunda femoris when we look from the posterior aspect then we can see this is the femoral artery continuing as the popliteal artery this is the profunda femoris artery and now you can see here these are the perforating branches which are giving ascending branch and a descending branch each of them is giving ascending branch and a descending branch now let us look at the arteries participating in this so the longitudinal arterial anastomosis as i said it is present where in the pos along the posterior aspect right of the close to the posterior aspect of the femur and is close to the insertion of adductor magnus obviously why because there the perforating arteries are going to pierce adductor magnus now the anastomosis is between ascending and descending branches of four perforating branches of profunda femoris artery as i have already shown you right so here you can see the descending branch of first perforating artery will anastomose with the ascending branch of the second perforating artery and uh, like this till the fourth one now what happens is the 
ascending branch of first perforating artery that also participates in the cruciate anastomosis right whereas the descending branch of the fourth perforating artery that will anastomose with the muscular branches which will be arising from popliteal artery so you can see here above this is actually uh, connecting with the cruciate anastomosis right participating in that then we have the longitudinal anastomosis and then this is also continuous with the uh, anastomosis around the knee joint now let us look at the applied aspect so pulsations of the femoral artery which you can see here they can be felt in the femoral triangle just below the mid inguinal point against the head of the femur so one can slightly press here right and just below the inguinal ligament using the fingers right you can see here two three fingers that, that can be used to feel the pulsation of the femoral artery and at which point the mid inguinal point remember the mid inguinal point is between the pubic symphysis and the anterior superior iliac spine in case the pulse is feeble bilaterally right on both the sides then it can be because of coarctation of aorta coarctation of aorta is narrowing of aorta right this is an embryological uh, malformation which occurs so if the femoral pulse is feeble on both the sides as compared to radial pulse so that indicates maybe there is coarctation or narrowing of aorta now the femoral artery is relatively superficial in thigh and therefore this is uh, the artery of choice for coronary angiography where a catheter is uh, inserted through the femoral artery radio peak dye is injected and this will go from the femoral artery to external iliac artery common iliac Uh, artery and then to the abdominal aorta thoracic aorta ascending aorta and the coronary arteries will be filled with the radio opaque dye which can be uh, seen uh, in the radiograph so this is used for coronary angiography second is for coronary angioplasty also right again you can see here uh, the the uh, this thing the deflated balloon along with the catheter that can be put along along this root itself and will reach the region right where the uh, blockage is there you can see the plaque formation is there in the ar coronary artery and then this balloon that can be inflated here if it will flatten the plaque right and widen the lumen of the coronary artery so this is Uh, used for performing coronary angiography and coronary angioplasty also another point of clinical significance that you must remember is in case there is popliteal artery aneurysm right so here is the popliteal artery aneurysm is the ballooning out of the artery thinning of the walls of the popliteal artery will occur here which can lead to its rupture so as a treatment what can be done femoral artery can be ligated in the adductor canal so somewhere here in the adductor canal the femoral artery can be ligated now this blood will not flow directly from femoral artery to the popliteal artery but we need to supply uh, the give the blood supply to the leg and to the foot so that will occur via collateral circulation and uh, through which anastomosis the anastomosis around the knee joint so let us just look at the arteries which will participate in this anastomosis and allow the collateral circulation so the collateral circulation is maintained by anastomosis between which arteries the arteries uh, some of the arteries have to come up from above right before the ligation of the femoral artery so they should arise from there and some of them should be the branches of the popliteal artery here so let us look at the branches first is the descending branch you can see of the lateral circumflex femoral artery and lateral circumflex femoral artery is a branch of profunda femoris artery which in turn is a branch of femoral artery so you can see here the blood will flow from here and till here right then next artery would be the descending branch descending genicular branch of the uh, femoral artery itself right so that will also go here towards the knee joint and from below we will have the genicular branches of the popliteal artery which are going to anastomose with these two arteries so via this route the blood can reach the leg and then the foot so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe 
uh, my channel so that I can put more such videos. And if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy, all types of that, then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com. Thanks once again.